Now that we understand some of the basics of Microsoft Dynamics 365, as well as the various client types you can leverage, we're going to talk about each of the different primary business applications being sales, customer service, marketing, and operations. In this module, we're going to focus on the sales business application. We'll review how leads and opportunities flow within the sales business application and provide a brief overview of the sales process flow. In this module, the objectives are to provide an overview of the sales application, to recognize the, the roles of leads within Microsoft Dynamics 365, to examine the lead to opportunity process flow, as well as to dive deeper into lead and opportunity entities. From managing leads and opportunities through the creation of sales products and competitors, Microsoft Dynamics 365 provides a feature-rich sales application that is core to the Dynamics 365 environment. The basic flow of sales activity within the system begins with the entry of leads. Once leads are qualified, they can automatically be converted into accounts, contacts, and opportunities. And then we have opportunities. Opportunities are considered potential sales, which can be maintained automatically through a sales process or through business process flows. Additionally, opportunities, which drive the sales pipeline reporting, can automatically be converted into quotes and even sales orders. And Dynamics 365 even provides a mechanism necessary to create and track sales orders and invoices within the system. To begin, what is a lead? A lead represents a potential customer with whom an existing relationship does not likely exist. One of the primary purposes of using leads is to determine if the customer is viable. In other words, what do you sell? What do they want to buy? Are you going to be a good match with this customer? Are they going to be a good match with you? All these questions are great questions and they're all a key part of determining that level of viability. A key element of working with leads and determining that viability, or in other words, the qualification process, requires some level of follow-up, again, to determine if that person's needs align with what the salesperson and the organization can deliver. For example, if a salesperson meets someone at a trade show and receives their business card, they might not know if this person is a viable customer or not. It's only after the salesperson has called on the person or followed up with them in some way that they can determine if this person's needs align with what the salesperson and what the organization can deliver. Now, not all organizations use leads. Organizations that depend on mass demand generation processes such as advertisements, roadshows, cold calling, prospect lists, and so on, will likely use leads. In addition, businesses that have demand generation methods or those that engage in mass marketing campaigns may benefit from lead management as well because this process helps businesses sift through the data and helps sales departments focus their efforts in the best direction. So to determine whether to use leads, if the organization invests substantial time and money in generating a list of possible customers, for example, the organization sends mass mailings, conducts cold calls, and so on. Also, if they keep lists of people who are the correct demographic, but for which it has limited information, such as limited contact information, might be another reason. Or if there's a process or team dedicated for sifting through these possible customers and contacting them to identify good prospects. Or finally, if they need to manage lists of potential customers that must not be mixed in with the existing accounts and contacts. All of these reasons would be good reasons for an organization to use leads. Even if the organization does not have large lead generation initiatives, ask if management wants to track the effort that sales spends tracking and working with prospects. If so, consider using the Dynamics 365 lead management features. So what does the qualification process look like? Well, the first thing to note is that when it's determined that a lead is not interested in the company's products, the lead should be disqualified. If the lead is disqualified, 
the details of the lead remained in the system. That way, if you make a mistake or they change their mind, the lead can be reactivated and qualified later. Now, leads can be disqualified for multiple reasons, such as a lead is not interested in the company's products or services anymore. The lead needs a product or service that the company doesn't provide, or there might be there, there might be a potential that doing business with this client may not be in the best interest of either party. So let's go through an example. Different departments may qualify or disqualify leads based on current promotions and marketing campaigns. Leads may not meet the qualifying process for the current campaign, but they may meet qualifications for future sales or marketing campaigns. By disqualifying them instead of deleting them, you retain the records for future reactivation. Now that said, leads can be deleted, but it is not recommended. As with other record types in the system, if the lead is deleted, the related information is completely lost. You might as well keep the information in the system just in case they choose to change their mind. Now the purpose of a lead is to either be identified as not viable or as a viable potential customer and sale. Leads that show an interest in buying are considered qualified and become opportunities. Now to better understand the qualification process, we'll look at the lead qualification process in more detail. Now that we better understand what a lead is and a little bit on how it's created and what its purpose is, Let's take a deeper look at how the lead to opportunity process flow works. So here we have a lead. If you remember, its full purpose is to be either qualified or disqualified. This is considered the conversion process. Now, if we decide to not qualify the lead, maybe because we determine that what the prospect wants, we can't sell or we can't deliver it, we would disqualify the lead. Now, when we disqualify the lead, it puts the record into an inactive status. The record now becomes locked, meaning we can no longer modify it or update it. With that said, we know it's possible that sometimes disqualified leads might come back due to various situations or their needs might change. In these situations, it's possible to go back and reactivate the lead and put them through your overall qualification process again. So if we decide to qualify the lead, because based on our conversations, we determine that the lead is a viable customer, we could qualify the lead. Now, once the lead is qualified, like when it's disqualified, the lead record is locked. In addition, the lead record is automatically converted into three separate records, an opportunity, an account, and a contact. Now keep in mind though, if you're a business to consumer organization, in other words, you don't deal with accounts, but rather contacts, the lead would not be turned into an account. It would only be turned into an opportunity and a contact. So to better understand the process, we'll review the steps of fully qualifying, disqualifying, and even reactivating leads within the system. All right, so we're back in the system and to take a look at how to be able to qualify and disqualify leads in the lead life cycle. We're going to navigate to our sales business application. And from our sales business application, you'll see under the sales category, we have our leads. So I'm going to go ahead and click on leads. And as with other record types in the system, you'll see that we have the various views that are available for us when it comes to managing our leads. By default, you'll see it opens up to my open leads. But if I click on that drop down arrow, you'll see I have several out of the box system views that I can look at to be able to filter down my leads and be able to see the various leads that are in the system. So not only do I have my open leads, but I also have open leads. So with my open leads, I had nine records, but you'll see that there are some other records in the system that are owned by other users. If I go in, you'll also see I have closed leads. And with my closed leads, you'll see I can see the status of those that have been disqualified as well as those that have been qualified. So in going through, we actually have our open leads. And again, with other record types that we have in our system, we have a standard command bar. 
And when it comes to creating the new leads, we have several options, just like when creating other new records within the system. We can use our quick create function. So we go to our quick create function, you'll see that we have the ability to create leads very quickly within the system. Or if we're already working on our leads, we can click on the new icon. So in this particular one, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use my quick create. So I go in, I'm going to select lead. And to see the quick create form for lead, you'll see that I have my topic. So let's say that it is uh, saw products at trade show interested in demo of them. Now, if I have other information, such if I already know the budget amount, time frame, I can fill that in. But again, when it comes to leads, most of the time we have very limited information. So what I really just know is I know the person's first and last name. So let's say that this is Katie Jordan. And she is the director of IT at Graphic Design Studios. And let's say that I also might know her email address. So I'll go ahead and plug their email address in there as well. And if I want to, you'll see I can put as far as her mobile phone number and even a description. Once I click the Save button, you'll now see it's going to create that new lead. And then also, right from here, allow me to view the record or create another one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on View Record. Now, once I click on the View Record, a couple of things that you'll see. First off, just looking at our command bar. You'll see in our command bar for when it comes to working with our leads, we have the ability to qualify as well as to disqualify and even take these leads and add them to a marketing list. We can run certain processes that if we have automated processes like a workflow or a dialog box, we can even trigger those processes as well as assign and share these leads. Now you'll also see within the lead form that up at the top of the lead form, we have this business process flow. So this is part of that sales process flow of before we do anything else, the first step is to qualify or to see if this lead is going to qualify. And to be able to see if this lead qualifies, there's additional questions that we want to be able to ask, such as, is this an existing account or contact? Do we know the purchase time frame? What's the estimated budget? How do they purchase this information? Is it by individual or is it by committee? Have we identified who the decision maker is? And then we can even put in more summary. So in looking at this, we can see if this is an existing contact by clicking in the existing contact. And most of the time, you can just simply type in the person's name. And if you press the Enter key and it does not come up with any more records, most likely there's not a duplicate. And within the system, there is a default duplicate check that is set up and enabled that it looks at some of the key fields, such as the first name, last name, even phone number and email address to see if they might be an existing contact or an account in that system. So I can go through and be able to confirm that they are not an existing account or same thing if I type in graphic and I press my enter key, you'll notice I don't see that it is an existing account. If I do know what the purchase time frame is, you'll see that I can put in a time frame. And let's say that I have been able to follow up and I do know that this the purchase process is done by an individual and I have been able to identify a key decision maker. Additionally, as I'm going through, you'll notice that when I have the required fields, my required fields are the topic and the name. But as we've talked about in previous lessons, the more information that we have, the better off we are having as far as to be able to get better reports in the environment. So some of the things that you'll see that I can even do is in looking at this information up at the top in the header, 
you'll see that I can reference a lead source. So I can even say, where did we get this lead from? So that we can go in and be able to evaluate where do we want to spend our marketing dollars? Where do we get the most qualified leads from within the system? I can also go in and change the ratings. Again, I can do this as long as I have that information. And then if we think that this is actually related to a marketing campaign, you'll even see that I can go in and even associate this to an existing marketing campaign. So let's say it's related to the product launch campaign. So again, this will allow me to be able to, from a marketing perspective, see where we've had the most success when it comes to marketing our products. Now, let's say that once we have this and we've talked with her and we got a better idea as far as what her budget is, and we realize that her budget with our products don't quite align with each other. So as part of that qualification process, we've determined that she may not be the best, she may not be a best or what our products are may not fit her budget. And so what we wanna go ahead and do is we wanna disqualify this lead. So you'll see that under the disqualify that there's a drop down arrow next to that action in the command bar. And from here, I can now specify certain options as to why I'm disqualifying it. Now these options of being lost cannot contact, no longer interested, or canceled are the default options that's available outside the box. But these can be customized to better suit a business needs using the customization functionalities within the system. So in this case, let's say we are disqualifying this and we're gonna set this up as being no longer interested. And in fact, before we actually disqualify this, let's go in and take a look. So now that I have this lead, and I have the record saved. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close out of here because what I wanna be able to show is before we even disqualify this lead is you'll see that right now it does sit in my open leads. So instead of now nine, I now have 10. So now we're gonna go back into that lead and I'm gonna disqualify this as being no longer interested. Couple of things that you'll see as soon as I go in and I mark that as being no longer interested, as we mentioned briefly, that lead, the status becomes disqualified and it's set to being read only. Not only that, but you'll see the status changes to what we selected when we chose the disqualification process. Additionally, you'll also see that within my command bar, I also have the ability to reactivate this lead. Now, before we do that, let's also see what happens when we're back in my open leads. So when I go back to my open leads, you'll see I'm now back to nine leads. And if I change my view to closed leads, you'll now see that it shows that that lead is now considered disqualified and is no longer part of my open leads. But let's say that She's gonna done some research. She realized her budget was not quite within the appropriate expectations for the products that she's looking for. And she calls and follows up with us and says, well, I've realigned my budget and I'd like to go ahead and continue the conversation further. So we can go through and be able to reactivate this lead. So I'm gonna go in, once I reactivate the lead, you'll notice the status changes back to open it allows me to go through and I can now put in as far as an estimated budget. So let's say that we have a budget. I now know what that budget is. And if I want to, I can even go in and let's say, for example, assign stakeholders. So if I know that Katie's gonna be a stakeholder or if there's additional people, I can put that in. If I've been able to go in and do some further research and know that we have some competitors that they are researching against, I have the ability to go in and enter competitors. So if I know that this is gonna be for Carter Electronics, I can put in competitor details as necessary. And so as I continue to move this, let's say that it is now considered a qualified lead and I now wanna continue the sales process or this business process flow. So this time, instead of choosing disqualify, I'm gonna go ahead and click on qualify. And when I click on qualify, again, you'll see what's gonna happen is with the lead, it will become 
marked as read only. And then not only that, but now you'll see that it takes us directly to the opportunity. And when we look at my business process flow bar, you'll now see that it automatically set up and marked the process of everything that we needed to do for that stage of our sales process as being completed. And it has now moved us to the next stage. And you'll see that with each, each stage of our sales process, it also will track to show how long it has been in that particular stage. Now, not only that, but the other thing you'll see that what it did was it went in and it created a new contact for us being Katie Jordan. So we'll open up that contact record. And from that contact record, you'll see that it goes in and records the transactions or the posts as to what's been going on with that particular contact. So I can even see from that contact, it was from an original lead and I can go in and even drill back to the original lead itself. The other thing it does is you'll now see that it also links it to an account. So we go in and we open up the account record and off the account record, you'll now see that I have my account name Katie Jordan is automatically set up as being the primary contact. And as with we talked about with the contact information, I can see all of the transactions or the history related to this particular account. So when it comes to the process of qualifying and disqualifying it leads, that once we go through and we mark it as being qualified, it then takes it to the next step of being our opportunity until we work that opportunity through our close phase. And then with that opportunity, you'll now see, or with that lead, you'll now see, as we talked about, it marks that lead as being qualified, again, sets it as being read only and changes the status. So if I go back to my closed leads, you'll now see that that lead itself is now marked and set as qualified. And at any time, if we need to, it goes back to we have the ability of taking any of these leads that were marked as qualified and requalifying them as necessary. So the process of leads to opportunities, the entire sales process can even stem from a marketing list. And from a marketing list campaign response, we might generate a lead. And then from that lead, we generate an opportunity. And let's say that we work that opportunity all the way through the process of closing as a one opportunity. And in that point, we can convert it to a quote and even take that quote and convert it to an order once we've gotten confirmation from the customer that they are ready to purchase the products or services that we're selling. So the Dynamics 365 environment will support the entire flow of taking a lead through all the way ordering and invoicing. In Microsoft Dynamics 365, as we now know, qualified leads become opportunities. When the prospect or customer expresses qualified interest in buying the business's products or services, they're considered an opportunity. So opportunities represents potential sales. And in many sales organizations, they are used to track their sales pipeline. Now, this is an important part of the sales process because this is where the sales team spends most of its time and effort. The process of working on an opportunity may include several customer interactions and how well the sales team manages the stage can mean the difference between a win and a loss. Additionally, working with opportunities can involve several tasks, including tracking information, sending literature to the customer, assigning and sharing opportunities, or even moving opportunities through a sales process workflow. Now opportunities can either be created manually or can be converted from a lead or even activity and are always attached to a customer record. And again, as a reminder, a customer is considered an account or even a contact as necessary. Additionally, opportunities can have a status of open, one, or loss. And if they are marked as won or lost, they can be reopened later as necessary. Similar to leads, opportunities can also be deleted. But again, 
all information within those opportunities will be lost. So it's safer to just deactivate them or mark them as being lost. In Microsoft Dynamics 365, when an opportunity is created, it resides in an open status. When a customer reaches a buying decision, opportunity records can be closed in one of two ways, either being closed as one or closed as loss. Now the following slide displays the differences between the statuses. So let's start at the beginning when a new opportunity record is created. In Dynamics 365, opportunity records are saved with the default status of open. Open opportunities are conventionally used to represent potential sales and will often have sales processes associated with them and can be modified at any time as necessary. Now, then you also have lost opportunity sales. When an opportunity is lost, it is important to change the status of the opportunity. This will take the opportunity out of the sales pipeline and allow salespeople and sales manager to focus on closing other opportunities. And then we also have one opportunities. When an opportunity is marked as one, this indicates the customer has decided to move forward with the placement of an order and has signed a contract to provide services. The definition of what's winning an opportunity is different from one organization to another, and it's important to define because it helps dictate how the organization will use the application as it relates to managing opportunities. And as part of the close process when it comes to opportunities, a special type of activity is generated and is referred to as a resolution activity. This resolution activity helps other non-sales users see the types of activities beyond phone calls, emails, and appointments, for example, that are taking place regarding a particular customer. Users can open these activities and see information regarding when the activity took place, the actual sales value, why they may have been won or lost, as well as who the competitor may have been as to who they lost to. So now that we understand a few basic elements of working with opportunities and their different statuses, let's take a look at how that might look within the web client in the Dynamics 365 environment. All right, so we're in Dynamics 365 where we left off talking about working with our leads. But if we wanna go in and take a look at our opportunities, again, we're gonna to go to our sales business application and from our sales business application, you'll see right below leads, we have our opportunities. And very similar to working with the other record types, when we go to our opportunities, we have our system views. And some of the system views that we have, you'll see quite a few of them, and that we have the opportunity to be able to look at closed opportunities, closed opportunities in the fiscal year, lost opportunities, my open opportunities, and even opportunities that I might be a member of, opportunities potentially closing next month, or even recent opportunities, and some of the recent opportunities that have been created. And we even have some as far as looking at our one opportunities. So when going through and taking a look at my open opportunities, you'll see that as we discussed regarding the leads, that when we convert a lead to an opportunity, it does create that opportunity for us. And as with some of the other common record types that we have in the system, the ability to create new opportunities can be done in one of several ways. In this case, we're gonna create a new opportunity using the command bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the new action, and that's gonna open up our opportunity form. And you'll see with the opportunity form, because it actually starts with the opportunity again, it allows us to start out with the business process flow of qualifying it. So from here, under the topic, I can give it a new topic and let's say that it's gonna be for Jim Glenn and Jim for the Coho Vineyard is interested in implementing a Wi-Fi hub and a tablet order processing system. So I know that this is going to be related to Jim. So again, this is where using the lookup functionality, I can type as much information as I know to be able to go in and select Jim's contact record. 
and you'll see that as I go in and actually set the contact record in the qualify stage, it automatically populates that information as well. And now because Jim happens to be associated or the primary contact for three different accounts, you'll notice as soon as I select the contact, the account records are automatically filtered down to just those accounts that Jim is a contact or Jim is related to. So on this particular one, again, this is going to be for Coho Vineyards. And then very similar to working with and entering information in here, if I know additional details regarding this opportunity, such as the purchase time frame, you'll see when it comes to currency that we have the ability of utilizing multi-currency. So let's say that Jim had a winery or had a vineyard up in Canada. For this particular opportunity, I have the ability and the flexibility to be able to sign different currencies on a transaction by transaction basis. I can even go through and type in or put in what we think his budget amount is going to be, the purchase process, and then for this particular opportunity, I can give it a further description. So as I go through and I enter in all of this information, you'll see that I can even identify the decision maker. And then once I do that, I can click on save. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this. And then once we save this, I can now be able to enter in additional information. So as we talked about in a previous lesson, you'll now see I can select different stakeholders or I can go in and enter in who's gonna be involved in this particular sales or this opportunity. When it comes to competitors, I can track competitor detailed information. And if you look over on the left-hand side, you'll see I can put in detailed information not only about the description, but their current information or the current situation, their customer need, and even their proposed solution. But you'll see that as I've gone through, with the exception of capturing the summary, I've gone in and qualified this opportunity to the point that I'm now ready to take it to the next stage. So what I can do to move it through the sales process cycle is I can click on next stage. And as I click on next stage, you'll now see that for the development stage of our sales cycle, we do want to get a further understanding about what the customer need is, be able to gather a proposed solution, identify who our stakeholders as well as who our competitors are going to be. So now at this point, when I go through and I set this up, I now have a better idea about what it might be. So my estimated close date, let's say I put this as being before the end of the year. And my estimated revenue, let's say that the estimated revenue might only be 12,000. And you'll see that the status right now is set to being in progress. Now from here, as I mentioned, if there's additional stakeholders that I've identified, I can put these additional stakeholders and I can assign them by clicking on the plus sign and then I can do a lookup. So if we have additional stakeholders that I want to be able to assign, or as we mentioned before, I also have the ability of creating new ones. So if I went in and I created a new contact using the quick, the quick create feature or even being able to come in and use the lookup feature and clicking on new from here. I can give it their contact information and then from here let's say that this is going to be the CEO and I can now associate it to Coho Vineyards and enter their additional information. So as soon as I save that, you'll now see that additional stakeholders will be entered. And then if I also want to include Jim as being one of our stakeholders, I can include him as well. So that anyone else who is looking at this opportunity knows all of the key identifiers or the key stakeholders that are going to be involved. And not only can I identify the stakeholders, but I can actually even identify what their role is going to be. So if he's going to be considered the technical buyer, but Chris Berry is going to be the decision maker, I can now even identify what their roles are within this opportunity. Additionally, I can do the same for my sales team. 
So this is going to be a team effort because of the potential revenue off of this particular sales. I can add additional users that are going to be on the sales team. So you'll see that by default, when I go through, not only can I go in and set up the additional Dynamics 365 users, but I can be able to go through and identify what their roles are going to be for the sales team. So if I want to set up another user and let's see that my CRM demo user is really the one who's working on this particular deal. So as I've gone through, I've identified the stakeholders and I'm working on proposing the solution and even setting up the customer need. So once I have this set up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save the changes. And as we save the changes, as we've identified that the CRM demo user is really the one who is working on this opportunity, I just happen to be entering into the system. So one of the things that you can see we have available from the command bar is not only the opportunity to be able to close this as being won or being lost, but we also have the ability of signing this opportunity to another user. So if I click on the assign button, you'll see that by default, it wants to assign it to me. But if I click on the assign to me, it automatically will allow me to switch back between myself and a user or team. So that not only are we limited, or not only do we have the ability to be able to assign it to users, but if we have sales teams designated within the environment, we can go in and designate it to a team as well. So now once I assign that opportunity to that other user, you'll now see the owner of this record is now that user. And if I close out of that opportunity, when I go to my open opportunities, you'll see that that opportunity is not in my list. But if I go to open opportunities, which you'll see that there's 22 of them in here, that it will be available within that list. So it is showing that it's available and I can see it in the open opportunities because again, of my privileges that I have set up within the system, I can be able to see other users opportunities. Now, if I wanted to, let's say if I go in, I'm gonna go back to that opportunity. I can go in, I'm gonna reassign this back to myself. So you'll see I can say assign to me And once I assign it to me, one of the things that you'll also see that you have the opportunity to do when it comes to working with opportunities, as we've discussed in a previous lesson, you'll see that we have a tab selector. So an opportunity form is a great example of one that might be a little bit longer. So instead of having to do a lot of scrolling up and down the form, you'll see that there's three main tab sections that we have within our opportunity. We have our summary section, which covers most of the detail of our stakeholders, the budget amount that we're working with, our sales team, the current situations, proposed solutions, and even our competitors. If you continue to scroll down, you'll see that you do have the ability to incorporate line item details in our opportunities. So if there are specific products that we are selling and we are using the product catalog, which we don't discuss in this particular course, but we do talk about it in more detail, in one of the upcoming sales courses. But in just to kind of show you how you can utilize being able to use the product catalog, I have the ability to assign a price list. So when I go through, I can set up a price list information. I can tell the system to automatically calculate it for me. And now I have the ability, as long as I have that product catalog set up, I can enter in and be able to add additional product details. So if I know that I want to be able to, or he wants to be able to look at some of the tablets, I can do a lookup on the tablets and be able to see all the tablets that are available. So I can select and look at the existing products that we have in our product catalog, set up our quantities, even if I want to, I can go in and mark discounts. And then as necessary, you'll see, based on how we have the product set up in the system, it'll provide the extended amount. And not only that, but when it's set to being system calculated, 
you'll see it will update my estimated revenue. So again, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that once we save that, let's say that I've gone in and I've communicated with him in more detail and we found out that we've lost this opportunity to one of our competitors. So let's say I go down to my competitors. I'm going to go ahead and assign it to, let's say, Taft Warehousing. And once I've gone in and I've set up that competitor and I've gone in and I've selected this, I now want to mark this opportunity as being lost. Again, it's not technically necessary to be able to go in and change these opportunities to being lost, but it does provide better analysis of when we're looking at these opportunities to be able to know, well, how, why did we lose it? So it could be something that we are outsold. And from here, we can then put in what the actual revenue was that we were outsold by. So let's say that we found out that it's $7,500. And then from here, I can even reference the competitor and then put in a further explanation as to why we were outsold. So that when I select OK, you'll now see the status of the opportunity is going to change. So the status of now changed to lost, like leads, it's set to being read only, and then our status is also changed to being outsold. So if I close the opportunity, and I go back to my open opportunities, I'm not going to have it in there. But instead, if I go to lost opportunities, you'll now see that it's going to be listed under there. But as we mentioned previously, let's say that we lost that opportunity, but then Jim calls us back and said, hey, you know, we thought we had the deal, but the pricing that TAF gave us was for a different tablet. So we'd like to resume the conversation. So when I go back into the opportunity, again, based on the status, you'll see the actions we have available in our command bar changes based on those opportunity statuses. So from here, I can click on reopen opportunity. And once we reopen that opportunity, one of the things that you'll also see that will happen is that in the activities, you'll see that it creates that resolution activity. And with that resolution activity, what it does is because we did close it originally, you'll now see that it provides additional details of the actual revenue, the close date, and who we lost it to. But because when we reopen it, one of the things that we'll also see is that as it goes through and reopens, that this status is now changed to canceled. In other words, any other user who might be looking at this opportunity can see that it was closed at one point as lost, but then that's been marked as being canceled. So as we continue to work through this opportunity, let's say that we've now won it. So one of the things that I can do is I can simply go in and I can mark this as being one. So when I click closed as one, you'll see that automatically the actual revenue comes from that estimated revenue. And again, we have the ability to change and set the close date as well as go in and set up the competitor. Now you'll see when it comes to the one that we didn't really have a competitor because we won this opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK. As we talked about, and as you see as far as with the loss process, when I mark it as being one, the status gets changed to being one. Again, it's set as being read only. And now when we look in the status, it shows as one. Additionally, if I go through and I look at my activities, you'll now see that it creates a second resolution activity because the first one was canceled. And just like we had before, I can click on the pop-out icon and I can see the actual revenue and the close date and additional details behind it. So that's one way of being able to mark that opportunity is one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of there. And now you'll see if I go down to my one opportunities, that in my one opportunities, I now have it showing up in my listing. Now, the other option that you also have available to you is when we have these opportunities. 
So let's say I'm going to go in and open up another opportunity called Ultra Books. So this is for laptops. And in going through and looking at this particular opportunity, you'll see I have some product line items on here. Well, as we mentioned, not only do you have the ability of taking these opportunities and being able to close them as one, but if we now go through and say, hey, we want to move this forward. So let's say that you'll see that it's been in this development stage for 14 days. Well, they now come back and say, can you go ahead and send us a quote? So again, I've gone through, I've identified the sales team, I've completed the internal, uh, internal review, and now to be able to present the proposal, how I can do so is you'll see that as I scroll down, one of the other tabs that we have in there is the ability to have quotes. And so I can create a quote directly from the opportunity by simply clicking on the add quote record. And you'll see that I've actually even created a quote from that record already. So let's just go in and if I click on the add quote, what will happen is the quote record will show up. And you'll see that the quote record, we actually have the quote and I have detailed information regarding payment terms, shipping methods, even freight terms. And from here, you'll also see that it is linked to that opportunity and it is linked to that potential customer. And if I wanted to, when I tell it to activate the quote, I can print it out. And once I activate this quote, I have the ability to print the quote for that customer. And if they go in and say, yep, this, these amounts look good, we're good with this, the, the budget, it's all within the budget, and what we talked about, it looks good, we're ready to execute on this quote. Well, then from here, you'll see that we can even take and be able to create an order from that quote. So potentially, we can take a lead, convert and lead to an, a lead to an opportunity, take that opportunity, convert it to a quote, and as we mentioned previously, be able to take that quote and even be able to create an order from it within the Dynamics 365 environment. From creating new leads and opportunities to learning the sales process flow, Microsoft Dynamics 365 provides many sales features to meet an organization's needs. In this module, the objectives were to provide an overview of the sales application, to recognize the role of leads within Microsoft Dynamics 365, and to examine the lead to opportunity process flow, as well as to dive deeper into the lead and opportunity entities.